Hello and welcome to GTO Coach and Go. I'm Jim Delaman with Group Travel Odyssey. I want to thank you for joining us today. And it's an exciting day for all of us here at GTO because this is the beginning of yet another new season of GTO Coach and Go. So what better way for us to start than by reminding you first, if you have not done so yet, please make sure to follow us on our show. Wow, let me try that. Please make sure to follow us on our social media channels. I told you it's been a while since we've gone live. So um, on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure to hit the little subscribe button and also ring the bell and you'll be notified anytime that we do have new content on our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on LinkedIn at Group Travel Odyssey and make sure to like our Facebook page as well. What did we do during the summer? Well, there's a lot that went on during the summer and that's kind of gonna be the entire topic today. What did we do in GTO for the summer? In order to help us with that, I'm gonna bring on the our resident expert, our, our director, our person who leads us forward in the GTO world. So let's bring on Corey Vries. Hey, Corey. Hey, Jim, how are you doing? Uh, well, now that I'm able to talk again, I guess I'm doing fine. You know, it's just have a few have a few months away from doing live feeds and stuff, and then all of a sudden I can't remember how to speak. So it's it's okay. I have already liked everything on our social media, so it's all good. <laughs> and honestly, I've not I I'm drinking water. That's all I'm drinking today. So you know, I business, business without boundaries out here. You can drink whatever you want. See, exactly, exactly. So, um, well, you know, as I was saying, a lot happened this summer. You know, uh, people went on vacations. We we did some trade shows. We did things like that. But the, the, the new things happening, the updates happening in GTO did not stop. And so as our first episode of this new season, we thought it would be a good idea to talk about, you know, the helpful updates that happened during the summer in GTO. So, Corey, where where do we want to start with this? Well, the first thing I want to say is that the updates that we're about to talk about are just a little bit of what we've done over the summer. A lot of the things that we we, we said we're going to take the summer, do a little work under the hood. Um, so we made things a little bit faster. We cleaned up some things. We did a lot of um, things for members that have been sort of um, that needed to get done. We so everything we're talking about today is not everything that we've done over the summer. And we'll kind of go over those as we go through. If it's a bigger project that we've been sort of talking about, then it'll get its own coach and go sooner or later. Um, but we did want to mention some things that would make it easier for you to use the system, some upgrades to the system, and some upgrades to our host as well, which is the first thing I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to um, share my screen with, with the world. <laughs> One of our and favorite that is, one of our favorite parts of this whole thing is our screen sharing. You know, that's so. true. It always it hesitates just a little longer than it, I want it, it to. It does. It does. <laughs> so what you're looking at here is just a normal everyday um, trip screen. Now, if this looks totally different than what you normally see, because our um, you don't see the the tables across the top, you see the tables down the side, then you've missed our regularly um, happening announcements that you will need to switch to the new navigation. If you have not done that, I will remind you that it's up here by hi your name. When you go to it, you can um, you can uh, go to your profile, you can change it over to this. Um, it will eventually change to this regardless. So you don't have to, but when it does change, it will happen without your knowledge and it will just occur. Our host is changing the way the interface looks. And as they make pro progression, we try to tell you about the progression as well. So this look should not be new. If it is, then you need to be switching over to it or at between now and sometime in October, this could just switch over automatically. And it's but, also, I mean, it's also a good idea, even if you're not gonna switch over to it permanently right now, Switch yes. over and take a look and familiarize yourself with it a little bit before it actually happens. So it's a good call. It's a very good call. Um, and you know, you, you just have to remember you can collapse this, so it gives you much more screen area, so that you don't have those things at the top weighing you down. You have a lot, lot more screen area. You can pull them back at any time, so that's not a problem either. But we noticed that yesterday a change happened that we wanted to make you aware about, <laughs> and that is up here at our trip name. 
and this 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 sort of area up here. And the reason it's changed is it used to be that this sat over next to the little home symbol, and then underneath it, it talked about reporting. Now, mine says settings because I'm an administrator, but yours probably does not. But with the way this looks at this this point in time, you can still go to the app home like you always did. Um, but your reports are going to look just a little bit different when you drop them down. Now, it used to be when you dropped it down, it took up all this area right here in a drop-down menu, and you had to scroll to the right to see them all. Reporting has changed now to where you just now scroll down to see them all. <laughs> so they're, they're, they're all still there. Your personal reports here, your shared reports, any recent reports that you visited, all they did was they flipped it from, from across to down and that you can search reports as well. You've always been able to do that, but it, it just looks a little different. Here's your new report button if you happen to be creating new reports. So we just wanted to take a second to, to, to acknowledge that, yes, yeah, sometime yesterday, because yesterday morning they hadn't done this, they switched this over. And in it, the only thing is it's, it's the way it's looked. Everything functions still the same. So that's just a navigation update for you. Um, one of the things that we failed to talk about, I think, before the summer, but you may have noticed and have been using for quite a long time, but we wanted to make mention of it, is overriding your trip name. So when you are looking at your trip name, you'll know, you'll remember that we have built out a way to create your trip name by the information that you provided. So I said it was a student youth trip uh, and the dollar, and I gave the two, the two, um, start dates. I gave it a sales year of 2024. And you'll notice that's the first thing. Um, the second thing on, on your, your naming convention would be then the organization or school that you're using. The next thing is the group type or types and then, then the destination. Now we do that for a couple of reasons. One is so that you just don't have to type in a trip name all the time. It's created by by the information that you put in. We don't like having to duplicate things. Um, but another reason why is it makes it makes it to where when you're going to search for things, you um, it's easily f uh, findable. I find that most people who have trouble finding trips forget to put the sales year because you could do reports by sales year um, and if it's not, it, like, if I eliminate that sales year out, it's not in the title either. Um, but there are many of you who don't like our naming convention. There's two ways to solve that problem. One of them is when you're using things like We Travel and you're wanting to name it something different, you have the ability later in the process to name a trip whatever you want. So let's say you're, you're selling trips out retail. And so what you do is you want a cool name. You don't want 2024 GTO training account, 11th grade Orlando, Florida. You want to sell it as, um, you know, the Disney blowout, right? So you could, you could wait until you get to the, to the process where you're pushing it out and change the name. So there is a process at, right before you send it to We Travel to change the name over in We Travel so you it would say Disney Blowout or you know Universal Extravaganza. Um but if you don't want to do that, if you want the trip name to be a different standard, you have the ability to override that trip name. All you do is check the box and you type in what you want your um um what you want your your trip name to be and it will override that for you and then this trip name will push forward throughout the entire thing um i that has unencouraged people to fill out this information um and i want to caution you because again this year, you know, it, especially those people who are new to our system only have their trips for this year in the system. But let's think about five years down the road when you have five years worth of trips and you're trying to differentiate them. So if you don't have a year in the in the trip name or some sort of different, like if you have, what happens next year when the group takes the same trip and you put Orlando trip, you have two trips called Orlando trip and the only differentiation you have is the date. And that makes it hard to create reports of trips for 
for sales years. So if you're going to use the override name, which is not a problem, please by all means fill out the information too. It's very, very important. And while I'm here, um, and all you have to do is check the box. If you uncheck the box, it will it will not go away. You have to actually take the trip name out and then uncheck the box. Um, so just be aware of that. It's not the checkbox that overrides the name. It's the it's the field. So the other thing I, I mentioned while I'm looking at it, this was not a topic for today, but we have had several of our members over the summer spend time building templates in the system. If you want help doing that, please let someone know and we'll help you through that. There's also some coaching goes about templates. So please, by all means, check those out. They are a time saver. Um, everybody's really excited about that. So that is our trip override. Very easy. But just again, a caution, please still fill out this information. Um, otherwise, your data becomes incomplete for later. Our next um, thing that we were going to talk about is TIL. Our TIL integration. Um, when you are looking at TIL, if you are a member of TIL, if you are using TIL as, as a company that you use. Now, we, we um, you might have met TIL at the recent CITA convention. They're out there for student tour operators to, to manage student finances on a trip. All those things that, that, that they do, um, we got a chance to, to see them at site and talk to them at CITA. And we have an integration for TIL. Um, so if you'd like to sign up for TIL, all you have to do is contact TIL, um, go through their process. And when they let us know that you're a member of TIL, you can use the TIL integration, which is basically a series of buttons you'll see the TIL financial button. So you can send then, you can send trip rosters, trip schedules. You can send them their tour operator or your tour directors, um, all the information that TIL wants. And it's just a click of a button. When I click that button, it sends it directly over to TIL. When I click this button, it sends it directly over to TIL. So just be aware that um, <clears throat> that's a possibility for you and an integration that we have built it's kind of cool and and for those people who may not know just in a in a <clears throat> 30 second elevator speech what what does till do for their for their groups so till <laughs> <laughs> having used um, it in Florida, i know <laughs> it's true so um till provides cards credit cards visa cards i believe for um tour operators student tour operators so they give the kid a card for, say, meals. You have meals that are provided on the trip, maybe that you were going to give cash. Or you're going to do a do a, a different card. The the nice thing about Till is they have a a system by which you can put the money on the card when it is needed and only what is needed. So let's say you have thirty dollars for lunch on January second. On January second, thirty dollars appears on that card. Let's say at eleven a.m. and not before. Um, and then you have another $30 that you're going to do the next day at 11 a.m. So you can add $30 for one day, $30 for another day, not $60 all at once. Um, so you have the ability to control the amount of money that's on that card. Then what's even cooler is, let's say you get delayed at the airport and you need another meal added immediately. In an emergency situation, you can add, like, like nobody's out of money. If you have the till card... Someone can add money onto that card and then you can eat at that airport because you got delayed. Or let's say you had to stay overnight because your flight was canceled um, and you needed to provide a way to get a meal to someone. Um, that is another a use for that. Um, and then those cards can be used beyond the trip by parents, by um you know, to sort of manage their children's finances too. So it doesn't have to just be used on a trip so it's kind of a neat little integration and but they need certain informations and that integration can happen immediately so all you have to do is send them a list and then they get the cards ready and um they're ready to go for the trip and then you manage when that money goes out to them so it's, it's really kind of a, a, a neat idea yeah that's great thank you yeah yeah um so 
that's our, our till integration. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit about the group leader portal. Um, oops, sorry. We had one thing that we did to the group, two things that we did to the group leader portal. One I can't show you and one I can show you. Um, and one of the things for the group leader portal, if you have not seen this, you then please go back and check out our group leader portal. But we have a drag and drop system by which you can do a rooming list in the system. You simply grab a name, pull it over, grab a name, and pull it over. And when you hit save rooming assignments, it will push it into our system so that you don't have to do a rooming assignment in our system. Um, so the group leader then can do this. <clears throat> if the company is the group leader, let's say you're selling a retail trip, then you can put them in by whatever, you know, whoever's asked to be roommates with whomever. And this is an easier way to do it than in our system. Um, but what was happening was as you entered in rooms, you'll notice that there were there's a lot of rooms on this trip. And as you were getting to the bottom of the page, the unassigned passengers were at the top of the page. And so we couldn't get, like you saw the passengers at the top, but you had to scroll down to see what hadn't been assigned yet. So we have made this scrollable so that you can see people at the top or the bottom or um, rooms at the top or the bottom. So once all these are filled out, but your names sit way up here, you can scroll down to the bottom and still drag and drop people over. That's a big deal because that was sort of a holdup for some people using this because it was really difficult to do that last set of people. It's really easy to do the first ones. Um, they're also color coded. Um, I believe this was done before the summer, but I just mentioned they're color coded by um, by package. So I know that every purple or every person in this bluish purple color need there needs to be two <clears throat> persons per the room, and then everyone who's in green is in a single room, and that means I don't overbook the room. So those are those are um, that, that's that's a new thing with our rooming list. Now, many people have had trouble because they didn't know who was an adult um, versus a child. This is an adult trip that I'm looking at right now. So I don't have this looking here, but I can tell you on a student trip, adults are marked with an asterisk. So any any adult on a student trip is marked with an asterisk. We assume that if you're doing a student trip, the group leader knows the students, but they may not know the difference between, say, an adult on the trip or their four-year-old kid who might also be going on the trip. Um, and so if you're unaware of that, so those adults will be marked. The nice thing is, is in Passenger Manager, they're also marked. So when you're doing our rooming list feature, which will come at a different coach and go, um, then you will see that those people are marked with an asterisk. So the hotel knows who the adults are as well automatically. So if you're using any one of the ways to get people into the system, um, if you're if you're filling out all the information, or if you're using We Travel or our portal, then that information already comes in. So um, that makes for a nice feature. That is our um, rooming list feature, uh, drag and drop. It's it is a fantastic feature coming soon. Um, in fact, probably within the next 24 hours is a submit button that locks it. So it will be locked into place when they hit submit. Save will save it in 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 QuickBase or in uh, GT, group, group Travel Odyssey, but it will not um, stop them from making updates. So they can save it, come back to it, make changes. When they hit submit, it will lock it to them, and then that way you they will have to come to you to make any changes, especially maybe after the hotel thing was submitted. So. Um, we just want to make sure that you under, understand that that will be coming as well. And then lastly, on our on our on our journey through new stuff today um, is talking about the passenger portal itself. So our passenger portal has had a few upgrades. Um, it still does things the same way that it always has, which is you sign your people, you, you add your passenger. This is, our portal is customer and passenger oriented. They fill out their information and then they register for a trip. Um, now that's none of that has changed. That's a little bit different than some payment portals where they take your money um, and then the next time they have to sign up again. This is you sign up, it's your portal. You can sign up for as many trips as you want. You can sign up um, for a trip now and a trip next year. This portal <clears throat> remains the same. But I wanted to make mention of three new things on here 
that make this much more user user for, not user friendly but usable for um, managing passengers. First is the trip messages. So here, what we see is um, a thing that says trip messages, and there is a place in Passenger Manager where you can place uh, any sort of message that you want to get to all the passengers, right? So this says, please fill out the passenger survey in the My Booking sections below. And we're going to check out that because that is thing number three that we'll be talking about. And where do you do that? Um, you do that in a new section called Passenger Portal. If you are using our Passenger Portal, you will have a, um, a tab here that shows the Passenger Portal. And you will be able to put in whatever message that you'd like. You can change that message. You can add to the message. You can delete that message. Um, it's it's totally up to you at this point in time as to what it says and when it says it. So as you're looking at that, um, like I said, it's the same message that has come across here. Um, and we've put the trip name on there because um, in a lot of adult groups, and some student groups too, you might be on more than one trip. Let's say you're taking a trip in February, and then you're going again on a trip in September. Um, then if it, it keeps track of both those trips for you. So it'll give you the trip name and the message. Very easy for you to add a message for, <clears throat> for that. Um, documents. You want to get a trip document to someone? That's, that's easy as well. For the passenger, all you have to do is view the document. Here it is right here. Um, I'm going to hit the button that says, hey, you know, we're, we're, you know let's, let's download that. And basically... What will happen is um, it will create this flyer, or I'm sorry, it'll, you know, add it. This is a plug for a concert I'll be playing at a week from Saturday. Um, <laughs> but this is, a, you attach any document that you would like, um, and it comes over into the system. Now, as of right now, that 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 is just a document that's going to them. So it can be the final itinerary, if you if that's how you want to get that out to people. It can be a form that they need to sign, fill out, and email back to you. Right now, there is no way to get a form back to somebody in our system just to get it to somebody. But in the future, there'll be ways for you to get people to fill out, uh, to e-sign documents, let's say, through the system. But just any sort of document, that, any sort of terms and conditions that you might want to send out through them, any sort of um, instructions, um, for the trip, any sort of um, like what to bring, things like that, that could all be, um, if like you have a trip packet, it can all be done by this um, this place. The other thing that you can do is add links to, to things. So it's not just a place where you can add a document, but it is also some place where you can add a link. So let's say you wanted them to go to YouTube to watch an introductory video before going on the trip. You could put the link to that as well in this section, and it will have the link um, URL there. They'll just click it, and it will open up in a new in a, in um, in their browser. Um, now, the way you get this information out to people is in Passenger Portal under the Portal section. There's an Add Document record. So here's that document that I just that I'm submitted. When you're adding a document for a customer um, or for, for a passenger, um, clearly I have, there we go. <laughs> My internet is running slow. You can drag and drop um, that right, on, right onto here, right? Yeah, that, and it is truly drag and drop. You just drag and drop it on into that little section and it will upload. Or if you wanted a link, um, Can't tell if I typed that right or not. The one thing you do have to do is make sure that you um, release it to the passenger. So you could create all your documents that you know you're going to do, but you don't want to release it yet. You would just release it to the passenger later. When you save that, and you go over to our passenger portal, refresh that page. You're going to see now. Oh, okay. Sorry. I, I must have typed something wrong earlier on the Google part. Um, but um, that is how you get that on there, right? Is um, when you do a link. And again, I have to have the link typed right. Um, I don't think it likes the capital W's, but um, it will show up here in the documents. And lastly, 
the my booking section has been advanced. Now, what used to be here in the my booking section was just some basic information like, are you a student or you are a, an adult? Now, what you can do is they can you can now ask questions to your client that you would like to come back into the system. So we're going to look at this one real quick. So this was legal full name, passenger preferred name, primary phone number, secondary phone number, um, passenger date of birth, their gender, the um, please include a traveler type, um, all, emergency contacts, um, sort of all, all of like any question you would normally ask for information to come back in. Now, those questions are set by you um, in the system. And if you'd like to, to when, when you're trained to use our portal, we will show you how to add those questions in so that you can ask them every time. Now, because you're like, well, I do a bunch of different questions for each trip. Like I have like 10 that are the same, but then on an international trip, I might ask different information. Those, those questions are customizable by trip. But if you do have the same 10 questions, you don't want to type those same 10 questions out every time. So let's get what your 10 questions are and then they'll be automatically added to every trip in our passenger portal. And then you can just add whatever questions you want for that trip. So if, if um, you're using this system, then let's talk and we will, um, you know, we'll go through it as we're setting you up for our passenger portal. We will show you how to get these, these different questions in. Um, and so now they'll, they will come back into the system as responses to, to the questions. Um, so if I went back to this trip and I go to passengers and I go to, I think that was who we were talking to. If I go down to the survey responses, then here are the responses to the question for this person. And then you can run reports on allergies. You can run reports on, um, you know, dietary restrictions. You can run reports on all those sorts of things. So you have the ability to do that once once the passenger has answered that information and lastly i want to mention that if you aren't taking in payments through a portal and you just need a registration portal you just want people to register you don't need them to pay you just want them to register then um you we we have that ability to do that as well um this trip got put into the portal as well as a demo for we travel so um, I don't have that ability to show you right here, but there's a button that says, or checkbox that says, use for registration only. You'll see it if you're using our portal system. And then that way it will not ask them for money. You can register and then you don't have to pay the deposit. Um, and it will just bring in your information. So all of those things sort of got updated over the summer here in our passenger manager. Um, gr great updates. Um, little things that have just sort of made the, the, our system better. You've probably seen some new checkboxes and some new buttons. We'll go over them as, as time goes through. Um, but a lot of them are self-explanatory. Um, you might have noticed just some changes in languages, other places. Like I said, things under the hood to get us moving a little bit faster, maybe giving a little bit more information, making things a little more um, intuitive. And that's what we got. Excellent. That's a lot. <laughs> it is. It's been a busy summer for us. It's been us. a busy it's been summer. <laughs> it's actually been an excellent summer. So, I mean, you know, it, it's it's nice that we've had these things going on. Um, but as you said, there are some grander projects that are in the works as well that as the year progresses, you'll be hearing more about that in, in future episodes of Coach and & Go. And just so you know, just a reminder, GTO Coach & Go does happen every other Tuesday at two o'clock Eastern time. It happens live. You will see Corey and myself. You'll see other people on here as well, going through um, some new processes, some new features, um, some things in GTO that were built to make the system even more efficient and to, again, help you have a business without boundaries so you can work from anywhere and do anything from your tablet, from your phone, from your laptop, um, and you're not restricted. So that's our goal is to continue to give you more of those processes and the things that you need to help take away uh, the pain points of planning your group travel. Uh, so we're working together as a community. We're working together to build the ultimate 
group travel community and make things easy for you. So if you do have ideas, please make sure to reach out and contact us and let us know um, the ideas and things that you have. The ways that we make this better for you are by, by getting your feedback as well. So don't ever hesitate to contact us and let us know what, what it is that you want. Absolutely. Corey, as always, it's great to have you here. Um, thanks for your, your expertise and your knowledge today. And I am sure in two more weeks, we'll have a whole lot more to share with people. Um, at least that's kind of what I'm planning. And again, don't forget, <laughs> if you are looking for any of the original episodes from the past couple of seasons, or um, a, a lot of the stuff that we mentioned did have previous um, coaching goes on it when we originally set them up, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe if you haven't done so. But if you go through and look at our playlists, you'll be able to find the GTO coaching goes and it's got all of the titles and you'll be able to find those there. Um, for those of you uh, who are members, um, if you go to community forum, you can also find it there. If you go under media, you will be able to find our Coach and Go episodes and our GTO Fast Break episodes. And Fast Break is um, a, a very short snippet of information that we put out on video on Community Forum on the weeks that we don't do Coach and Go. So it's just little helpful hints, things like that. And so there will be a new Fast Break next Tuesday at this time. So um, I will make sure to send information on that out to you when we do our weekly updates on Monday as well. So again, Corey, thank you um, so much for Thanks all of for this. Having me. Oh. Anytime, anytime. And by that, I mean every two weeks. So, um, <laughs> and uh, for everybody who joined us today, again, thank you so much. And we will see you in a couple of weeks. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this episode of GTO Coach and Go. We invite you to stay connected with Group Travel Odyssey on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And be sure to check out more of our media, including Destination Dispatch and the Destinations Beyond Expectations podcast. Please visit our website, grouptravelodyssey.com, where you can learn more about GTO and request a demo. Group Travel Odyssey, business without boundaries.